Welcome back to The Sporting Life, everybody. We are at the season's crossroads, and yet unless there is snow, it is always basketball season on the New York City playgrounds, a birthing place of legends. Some of them rise to international stardom. Others fall to heartbreaking depths. Earl Manigault is a literal example of the latter. He was the Jordan of his time. Great agility and quickness. There wasn't too many people that could actually stay with him. When he got on the court, he was a magician. Earl was not a great passer or anything. You gave him the ball and he got to the hoop somehow. I think he taught Michael Jordan undercover, to tell you the truth. Every playground has them, legends that seem to grow with every passing year. But nowhere on earth do they begin quite so large or remain so revered as on the asphalt of New York City. His name is Earl Manigault. Everyone, everyone knows him simply as Goat, a jive derivation of his last name that came decades ago when he was making another name for himself, the Goat, Herman Helicopter, Joe Hammond, Tiny, Dr. J, Lou Alcindor. They would hone their skills on their own playground and then suddenly appear on another, a gunfighter in sneakers. And the Goat was one of the fastest guns in town. A lot of us really didn't really didn't believe in the NBA, of, of going to the NBA, because we was playing at our peak against the NBA players. And the money wasn't that great, so it wasn't really no, no big thing to us. That one summer in 65, we, we, we did have some fun and uh, um, managed to impress a few people out there on Sundays at the, at the Rucker tournament. But uh, there were just too many things uh, pulling him down. is 48 and dying now. Legs which once boosted him to dizzying heights won't even lift his feet off the pavement anymore. A lifetime of drug abuse has him on a lengthy waiting list for a heart transplant. Way back when, somewhere in the region of the 1970s, Earl used to be an IV drug user, and that's something that he subsequently has given up. But the result of that has been a disease called endocarditis, which is something that affects the heart valves. And in this case, it affected a valve called the aortic valve. The valve became very leaky. And the result of the valve being leaky was that the heart muscle itself became enlarged and very weak. Sometimes when he's sick, he'll tell me, Earl, my heart is hurting. You know, and I start worrying about him. I worry about my father all the time. His father grew up fatherless. The playground's his only release. But they also paved the way to drugs and jail. College didn't last a year, and a tryout with the Utah Stars of the old ABA was a similar failure. Somewhere along the way to mortality, the GOAT came face to face with himself, and in 1976, after coming clean, he began to give back, right there at his own Upper West Side playground, appropriately called GOAT Park. So that's the trophy that you want to win, right? What are you going to do? How are you going to win it? How are you going to win it? by taking a tournament. It is called the GOAT Tournament, once financed by pimps and pushers, then by money from the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. Friends help now, but it's tough. Eight or nine thousand dollars for a summer basketball program doesn't come easy on these streets. It's pretty rough on me, but we, we managed, you know, to get by a lot of favors, you know. I, I still have a lot of friends out here, you know. They love what I'm doing, and they learn a hand. The message he works so hard to deliver midst dribbles and dunks today is one he himself ignored at their age. He teaches us how to stay off drugs and how to, how to keep your head up and be somebody in this world. And don't, don't, don't make the mistake that he made, things like that, how to um, get an education besides playing ball, you know, because that's not really a hobby. You can't but depend on that. So you make sure you have something else to um, fall back on. You know, we, we, we teaching one another. You know, I learned a lot from them, and they learn a lot from me. It keeps me busy, you know, healthy, you know, and keeps me off the street, too. 
Within this chest beats a ticking bomb. It's detonation time, anybody's guess. Every day without a transplant is a victory in search of an end. I don't want to die, you know, not at the moment or no time soon, but I know I have to go. His heart muscle is very weak. It's working at 13%, normal being somewhere in the 55% range. Now, we've been lucky with the medications that he's stabilized for the past two years. But usually, people who have such a weakened heart muscle as Earl have, the prognosis at two years is very poor. I believe there's a reason for everything, and uh, I'm still here, you know. Uh, I enjoy what I'm doing, and uh, I'm helping out a little bit. These mean streets guard their legends jealously. And while they gave this one great life and a cruel method with which to take that life away, they still guaranteed an immortality which only they can understand. The goat, after all, will live forever. As with most legends, Earl has become a bit larger than life in the passing years. They tell the story that he once was able to rise and dunk, take the ball and dunk again before he ever returned to the court. Rubbish, he chuckles. Not even the goat could do that. But still you wonder. <laughs>